All right, so today we're going to be uh, playing Leisure Suit Larry 3. Uh, I have sped up the gameplay after the um, intro. The, if you watch the non-commentary version, it is a little over four hours long. And that's with me knowing most of what to do. Uh, there was a lot of stuff where uh, I did die quite a bit. Uh, especially during the log ride for Patty. Um, but we see here, basically, the game starts off with our intrepid hero, Larry Laffer, um, cavorting, basically getting married. Once pristine and primitive, covered by virgin rainforest, splashed by gurgling streams, Nantunite Island has discovered and been discovered by modern civilization. So what does that mean for this island? We're about to see. Uh, the villagers, eager to shed their Stone Age lifestyle, united themselves by forming the Natives, Inc. to protect their interests and develop their island. Realizing that they were sitting on a yuppie dream, a vein of gold they could mine through tourism. Learning modern construction techniques through self-help books and pirated videotapes of this old house, they began building a hotel on the beach. Borrowing heavily from foreign investors, they expanded into some very attractive tourist traps. You can see like it continues to build on the beach and you start seeing houses or whatever that might be uh, basically being built on the very volcano that Larry had climbed up. But growth really exploded when they discovered the holy grail of modern marketing, the wonder of timeshares. Ah, civilization. Who would want real palm trees when you can never have to prune or water those new plastic models? Welcome to Paradise of the Pacific, the all-new, all-improved, totally yuppified, consumer-oriented, non-tonight island. And that's where we start. It gives us a little thing, warning this contains some material which may not, or may, may be deemed offensive to by some players. If you're offended by adult situations, don't play. So you have the option to bail out or go ahead. You want to pick uh, either 18 or over. You can choose to go through these questions if you want, if you're that inclined, or if you hit uh, Alt Control or Control Alt X, it'll let you bypass, and you hit five to get the raunchy level. And as far as I can tell, the raunchy level, the only place it actually applies is here in the intro with the binoculars. I don't know where else that level applies anywhere in this game. So you talk about, uh, or you see how it's Larry. He's got his little Hawaiian shirt on, shorts. Uh, he's got a little tummy there. He's been living a good life. And there's a little plaque over here, which if you do, look sign. You go there. And it's kind of hard to read, so what you can do is you can say read sign. And it'll actually tell you what it says. On this site, the great hero of our people, Larry Laffer, single-handedly saved our island from our mortal enemy, the evil Dr. Nunuki. So then you just exit out of this, say cool. And if you look, it tells you about from this point, you can see everything looks great. It tells you about the, the plaque and the binoculars. And also in here, you can also change the color. Like uh, by default, it's usually blue and white. Uh, it's actually, I don't like that scheme. I actually much prefer the black text on white. So what we're going to do is go to action, colors, and you can experiment, but zero will be black, 15 will be white, and now it looks normal. So we're going to go over here, look at these binoculars. All right, or we'll just try use binoculars. And that one on the right is broken, so we're going to go over to this other one. Hit F3, which will repeat the command. 
And again, this is the only place I know that the raunchy level applies, because if you get questions wrong, the drapes will actually drop down further to the point where I don't think you actually ever see anything. So we see here start to lower the drapes, but they hardly go down. And you're thinking to yourself, if you've never played this game, so what's the big deal? Well, as you can clearly see by the jiggle, it does not look like she's wearing a bra. So, boop, she takes off her top, and you see boobs and nipples, and she takes a little walk with her boobs bouncing. And that is literally the only part I think that whole part of the raunchy level applies. So now Larry looking cool with his shades and Hawaiian shirt and lei, we're going to take a stroll. As I said in the beginning, um, even though there's technically no intro, uh, well, there's the intro at the beach, but we haven't seen what's going on story-wise with Larry. So the game will actually direct you uh, for a few places. As you can see, that hand uh, down in the lower left screen, it says, take this way to go to your house. So every time Larry goes home, we know based off Larry 2, something is going to go wrong. So let's see what happens to poor Larry in Leash Suit Larry 3. Oh, look, we're home, and it's a glorious looking home. And there's our beautiful wife. And I, you know, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Is it Kalalu? 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 I don't know. Kalalu is how I've always pronounced it. <clears throat> Basically, she says, you don't live here anymore. I found a new lover and, and filed for divorce by Island Law. All they need to do is walk three times in a circle around her bed. And I've done that many times already. You're stunned. You had no idea anything was wrong. And we see another head pop up at that tub. And it looks like someone's talking. So someone is talking to our woman. What do you mean divorce? Walk three times. Say it isn't so. Well, Larry, I can tell you one thing. Uh, it is so, Larry. I'm leaving you and keeping the house. Now please go and leave us alone. And Larry, apparently from that pool, cannot see the fact that there is someone there. And you say, us? What do you mean, us? Are you in the hot tub with someone else? Who? Who is it? <clears throat> and the answer is uh, going to be unfortunate for Larry. I'm with Bobby, my new lover. Bobby is able to meet my needs where you never were. You'll never bore, or you'll never bore me to sleep again, Larry Laffer. And then Bobby disappears under the water. How could you possibly leave me for another man, you cry? Well, here comes the damaging blow. I didn't, you fool. Bobby's a woman. Boom. Shock. Poor Larry. Not only does Kalulu no longer love you, she's fallen in love with another woman. <clears throat> what could Kalulu possibly see in an Amazonian, hardly riding former cannibalistic uh, repair chick person. I can't remember how it phrased. So we're just going to leave. Because obviously there's nothing left to do there, at least yet. So we're going to take a stroll around the island. I don't have the island mapped, and neither, nor did I during the gameplay actually think about mapping this area. So there's a few times I walk around a little bit lost. Anyway, Larry says, recovering from the shock, he's uh, starting to think about it. I suppose I could go into morning, you think, mope around all day, sit in my room, rent lots of videos, things like that. And then the save game feature uh, it comes up every five minutes. Apparently it teaches you to save early, save often. Or I could give up on women, remain celibate forever, enter the mystery or something. Which we know, that's not Larry's style. Wait a minute, what am I thinking? No way, not me, not Larry. Larry Laffer. You know, this island is the perfect location for a sophisticated single swinger like yours truly. And thanks to the wonderful island tradition, Kalulu's dowry gave me hundreds of acres of potentially valuable forest land. 
perhaps my love for Lulu blinded me to the potential of my current locale. Where else could I find more women than a tropical resort? And to think every one of them came here seeking just one thing, a good time. And this is perhaps one of my favorite scenes in any Leisure Suit Larry game. Uh, which is about to happen right here. I've had it with monogamy, marriage, long-term relationships. So be it. My life's new goal will be to allow as many women as possible to enjoy me while they can. And here we go. The telephone booth arises. Larry looks around, makes sure no one can see him. Gets into his thing, takes off his glasses, looks around, rips off his shirt, and boom! He's back. It's one of the coolest scenes uh, in Lucy Larry by far. I love that little bit. Look out, girls. Just when you thought it was safe to dive back into the gene pool, the original swinger is at it again. All right, so now we're, official, we're officially Larry again because we're back in the Lucha suit. But... There's still one more thing that needs to happen for everything to go right. And I just need to remember where it's at. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, go back to the house. And we'll see she's no longer in the pool. Now, you can see a mailbox, so obviously there's something to do with that mailbox because that's the only thing accessible in this area. So you open and then you look in mailbox. Well, well, look at this. It's an envelope from your credit card company. So we're going to go ahead and get that. And uh, could it be that big break from Ed McMahon you've been hoping for? Say it's an answer from the credit card company whose application you mailed only 15 weeks ago. We're going to open, you find a credit card. It's got your name and only your name on it. So that way the old ex-wife can't uh, claim anything. And then when you look at it, it says, how will you ever use it on the island? Uh, everyone knows that you have nothing because you're divorced. So I am going to change that reminder to remind me every 60 minutes, though I will say when I played this, um, typically what I do is play it in small doses, like I'll play 15, 20 minutes, quit, uh, go do something else, come back later, another day, play 15, 20 minutes, quit. And that way I don't feel like I'm just trying to knock this out in one sitting. It gives me time to do this and other hobbies that I have. So you will see throughout this uh, recording uh, where I quit and then restore, quit, restore uh, from playing the game. So we walk over here. And there's a TV, a little bench, and a little table on the table. Notice there's nothing there right now. All right, so there's clearly nothing to do here. So we're just going to go ahead and stand. Apparently, it is not like Leisure Suit Larry 1, where you change the channel until you find something interesting. So we're just going to leave it on and take off. That's the house. Honestly, can't remember where all the passageways in this jungle are. Um, I will say this later on, when I have to find the lawyers, uh, it took me quite a bit of time. And I remember originally playing the game, and it took me quite a bit of time to uh, find where the lawyers were, because their path is extremely freaking hidden.
Okay, so that little piece of wood right by the rock kind of stuck out, and we're going to go ahead and get that. And the good thing with uh, Lucy Larry, you should always typically take a moment to stop and look after you pick up something. Uh, it may give you a clue as to what we're going to do with it. So you can tell we're still not quite done because we're seeing like credits up here, like with the graphics done by. So you know there's still more somewhere to do. Okay, and this is Fat City. So we just have to find the screen that'll nudge us in the right direction uh, as to what needs to happen next in Larry's life. Because Larry's life falling apart is not quite done yet. Okay, this is the old Chippendales. Currently, I have sped this up to be about two hours. Uh, I may even speed up the gaps where I'm aimlessly wandering around or don't have anything to say. Oh, there we go. So now we can see the hand appear, uh, once again, pointing to the lower left. So let's see how else Larry's life falls apart. So this is Native Inc., which is where Larry works. Uh, owned by Ken, which is the chief of the island and the father of your now ex-wife. Good morning, David, you tell the guard. Another day, another dollar, huh? Uh, perhaps so, Larry, but then again, perhaps not. Chairman Kenneth wants you to report in his office now. Okay, David, you respond. But to yourself, you think, don't worry, it's probably nothing. I bet he wants to compliment me on my last big ad campaign. And there we see Ken. Good morning, Mr. Laffer. It's so nice for you to fit a little time into your busy day to drop by and see us here at Natives, Inc. Have a seat. Anywhere but on my couch. So Larry kind of looks around. This reminds me very much of Legend of Crandia, the way they're animating Larry, like when he looked at the envelopes and how he looks around. Uh, they didn't really do that before in any of the Sierra games that I recall, in Lu or I should say in the Lucy Larry series up to this point. Perhaps you're wondering why I summoned you here, Laffer. It has nothing to do with that recent ad campaign of yours, although by its appearance, it's not doing well. Oops, this isn't going that well, is it? Since you're no longer married to my daughter and your marketing skills are non-existent, I can't for the life of me think of a reason why I should keep you on. He's pounding his fist. In fact, I've been waiting for this moment for quite a long time. I know the perfect way to handle this. How you hate it when he gets that look in his eye. Perhaps I can introduce you to my favorite hobby, which would be bowling. Son of a bitch, yells Chairman Kenneth. Another 7-10 split. Davy boy, load up my RAM disk. Well, well, seems your ad campaign wasn't the only thing Chairman Kenneth didn't like. Oh, well, you lived off your wits before you can do it again. So now Larry is divorced and no longer has a job and obviously has nothing to keep him here on the island. So we're going to go ahead and save. All right, so I've restored now. Um, you can see that Larry's walking faster. This is where I've sped up the game from the four hours to the two hours. I tried to speed it up to one hour, but he was moving so fast and typing so fast that it would literally be almost impossible for me to keep up with what he's or what I'm doing with Larry. So we take a look here, and this is the Changing Cabana. It has three cubicles, uh, which have doors, a sink with running water on the side. Public sink is mounted on the side. Bar of soap hangs over the sink, suspended by a rope. So we're going to get a drink. So Larry drinks some water, and you'll see he gets a couple points. Get soap. You grab the unusually shaped soap on a rope that hangs above the sink. Get more points. 
What I did like about Leech Shoot Larry 3, the way it does its points, you see them being added versus it just suddenly skipping to that. So, you know, like it would go from 28, 29, 30, 30, 30, 30 go up to 40 versus going 28, 40. So walk around, take a look. In the trash, there's nothing except a card. Makes a reference to another Leech Shoot Larry game. Try to use toilet. You can't do that here because it's not a freaking toilet. Alright, so now we're at the beach and we see a guy walking up saying souvenirs. So you see that she's clearly interested in souvenirs and that's like her thing. So if you get close enough and say, look, woman, hello, my name is Larry, Larry Laffer. And you can see uh, she is uh, topless and got a rather nice body. And there it is. If you look at her or try to talk to her, it'll zoom in on her face. And she says, Larry, I'm just a material girl. So that is already a clue as to what we're going to have to do to get her attention or her affection. And for the life of me, I don't know how to exit. So we just click. <laughs> All right. So... see once again a different set of souvenirs and the beach is named Sonifa Beach which is clever So we have the credit card that no one else or everyone else on the island knows is worthless. So what you do when she says she's a material girl, you give her the credit card, which makes her uh, extremely happy. So as you can see, uh, this allows Larry to, while he's closed, uh, get it on. And the souvenir guy shows up and uh, she stops to basically get a souvenir and this is a knife which she gets and she gives you the knife to hold uh, while she pays She apologizes for interrupting and gets back on top. A lot of wiggling and jiggling, but Larry uh, has his pants on, so and suddenly you become aware of hundreds of tiny crabs in your pants. In your lovemaking, you shout something about having crabs, and you pull it out. Crabs? I should have known better than to have anything to do with an old man from this beach. And then she tells you to get lost. But don't worry, we'll be back. This isn't the last we see of her, so we'll just move on. It's interesting in the lower right hand corner that palm tree is looks like it was not colored. So there is a wood which has a uh, unusual shape, in the, if you will. And this soap has a hole in it. I, you know what? Literally, I played this and I never noticed that the soap has a hole in it. It's odd. So what you do is you sharpen the knife because it says it's dull on the stairs. 
and it becomes razor sharp. Ow! And you see we're stacking up the points. We're up to 180, which is not much when you're looking at 4,000 points total. But we'll get pretty close. So we're going to keep walking around. And we're going to go over here. If you say, look, large cliff mostly prevents your passage to the west. In the center of the area, there's a large clump of island grass. So this sign on the door says Chippendale is currently closed. If you look grass, because it points it out. It says it was once worn by the natives. So let's cut the grass with the knife. And what do you know? So when you look at the grass earlier, it gives you a clue already of what it's going to be used for. So we're going to go ahead and weave grass. And make it into an outfit. For a guy with no skill, he's pretty skilled at a bunch of different stuff. So we go over here, and this is the nightclub, and over here in the lower left, if you look at him, it'll actually tell you it's Al Lowe and Bill Skirvin. Uh, they're discussing a 3D animated game. So you say you talk to Al, just what do you want to say? How are you, Al? Hey, I've got an idea. How about you and I sit in a comedy club and we make the character say, hey, how are you, Al? How are y'all? Says Bill. Are you crazy? That's lame. You're right. That's not a good idea. Let's get out of here. Zoop, and they teleport away. All right. So we're going to sit. All right. Out comes the comedy club of Paul Paul. I'm going to try something different tonight. Tell me the name of three of your favorite ethnic groups. Now, I'm not going to offend anyone on this YouTube channel, so what I'm going to do is do Ethnic 01, Ethnic 02, Ethnic 03, and I am going to super speed this whole joke. I don't think, uh, other than this playthrough, I've actually ever sat through to see the end of this comedy act. But I did it for the playthrough just to see if there was an end, and it took a long time. So that's why I'm actually speeding this part through. And that's it. He turns into a duck and you get points for it. So I would recommend if you're playing, go ahead and Sit down, let the joke start, and walk away, get some coffee, and eventually come back when he turns into a duck. So we're going to go into this cave. So the first time, to me it looks like it goes right out to the beach, which it does not. Obviously it's a cliff. But that's very deceptive uh, of the way it looks. All right. So now we are in the resort. We go talk to this snooty guy over here and say talk man you attempt to catch the clerk's attention excuse me i'm sorry sir but this is a private hotel and there's literally nothing you can do to talk to that guy or nothing that i ever found all right first we're gonna hang let's see i don't think we can go here nope all right so let's go back up hang a right see what's over here and what you want to do is um, when you pass by oh, okay the room's currently empty look bored that's your board says drink special of the day vivid fluorescent ink blah 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 uh, all right that's a point
pool with a grand piano. This place sure looks dead. I think it's kind of cool that they do the mirror effect in this game. And what's funny is if you say look in mirror, it'll actually say it back to you in reverse. Let me show you. Look mirror and it says you see yourself in the mirror or something like that, but it's all written backwards. Talk to man. Hello, sir. Could you give me some information? The major D responds, if you'd like to see tonight's show, you'll have to have a ticket. You say show ticket and it says, I have a ticket right here. Oh, really? Well, for tonight's show, I'm only accepting the one on page six. So this changes. Uh, this is random. This is part of the copy protection. It has ticket numbers spread throughout the manual. So what you have to do is look at page six. If you don't, he will get you um, pretty much killed and he says well well okay and what you have to do is pay the man however we have not acquired money so we're broke so we know we do have to come here but we just don't have money yet and the door is locked so if you do knock on door don't do it. Not yet anyway, because it will result in your death. Dunk, 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 dunk. We will eventually knock on that door, but it's going to require something. So let's try this again. And we're going to look around because we need at least money to pay the Matri D. And We've been through most of the screens, so somehow we have to get money. And we've got what we need, I'll tell you that much. Uh, because we know a certain someone will pay money for souvenirs. And what do we have? We have the little dress we just wove, and we have that weird piece of wood that's shaped like a penis. So that's what we're going to do to make some money. Now what you have to do is you have to carve it once you've sharpened the knife to give it that little extra uh, eroticness to it. There we go. So now it looks like something from the natives. And we're going to go back to the beach. And now we're going to sell to her. And you basically tell her it's 20 bucks and it's the last one. And it says your disguise seems to be working. She doesn't recognize you. And you say, there is one part that might have dragged you. And she said, son of a bitch, it's a deal. You're lucky I'm down to my last one. Thank you very much. And now we have 20 bucks. So now what we want to do is go back, uh, get dressed again in the leisure suit. Now we're gonna have to go back to the maitre d. Wear the suit, put that back on. And then you toss the silly dress down the hole. And we can see she's now gone from the beach, so we're definitely done with her. We're going to go ahead and take her towel, so... I'm not sure what the reference to the lizard was. But it looks like a, a red hot burning penis, I suppose. Alright, so we're going to go over here. Look in the mirror, you see yourself looking back at you. And the poster will tell you that cherry tart. 
And he says, I need a ticket. Once again, we're going to say show ticket. Now the ticket is on page five. So now it's a different ticket number. So we give him the right ticket number and he says, but I must have made a mistake. There isn't any seats. So you pay him and goes, oh, well, look at this. Allow me to show you to your seat. You quickly make your way through the crowd of men and take one of the few remaining seats near the rear of the showroom. Good old Larry, always about the rear. And now, lady and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, cherry tart. The lights go down, and out she appears, doing her little fancy dance. Fend it. The men start throwing money at her as she spins and dances and gets fancy, causing epileptic seizures to the unaware. And then down she goes. Not the only time she's done that. That concludes tonight's two-hour spectacle. Good night and walk safely on your way home. What a show. So just as we leave, that's when Cherry Tart appears and she's on the phone. We're gonna get really close and talk to her, like super uncomfortable close. She is hot. Uh, I mean, you know, for pixelated graphics and all. So we talk and she says, hey, I'd love to quit the show business and get a farm. So now, she wants a farm, and we know that we have land because of the divorce. And she says, why, well, I'd do anything for land, because Larry offers it up, because he doesn't need it. It's just a bunch of forested area, which, I mean, it's a, it's a resort island. I think it would still be worth money, but there we go. It's a, it's a Leo Shoot Larry game. Logic is not always applied. So we're going to save the game. We need to get deed for land. Okay, so to get that deed, what we have to do is find the lawyers. Now you've seen me walk around and not seen the lawyers yet. Uh, even when I did this playthrough at the normal speed, it took me a while to find where the lawyers were. Because again, I wasn't mapping any of this out, I was just roaming around. Uh, thought it'd be a little funner that way, just to try to find stuff out on my own. Even after I find it, have to try to refind it. So, I remember the path being difficult, and I remember it being up. So... It's not there. By the way, we just missed it. So I keep poking around as I'm playing this, trying to find out where the lawyers were. And I remember they were like up a screen and like a weird path. It was on the previous screen, Larry. But uh, as you can see, I was having a difficult time, even when I was replaying this, trying to find where the frick that screen was and I'm basically hitting all the same screens trying to find where the thing is and as you can see now there's a newspaper on the table so we get the newspaper and just read it scanning through you find it says coming soon here lounge passionate patty so now we know passionate patty is coming
All right, so we stand, put the newspaper back, and still haven't found the lawyers. So I'm gonna wander around some more. Okay, we're on the right screen now. Still can't go up, can't go up. Oh, look, I can go up. Wait, I'm stuck, there we go. So originally, this took a long time to find. And this is the best name for lawyers. It's Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. So we're gonna go in here with the fancy sliding doors. Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. Look at man, Roger is his name. All right, Roger, is there a lawyer available that I could talk to? Yes, we have some available. What specifically do you want? Now we're gonna have to tell Roger about the land. We have to talk to one of your attorneys about real estate. Good day, Mr. Laffer. Certainly Dewey Cheatham and Howe is the right place for you. So now we're gonna go over here. And we're gonna talk to Susie Cheatham. So we're gonna sit down and talk to Susie. Good day, Larry. How are you? Oh, by the way, did my secretary explain the policy first time free, second time not so free? Ask about land. So it's come to my point that my wife, a wonderful woman, uh, brought to our marriage. Basically, I get land. She's left me. I heard some ancient island tradition. Blah, blah, blah. Say no more, Mr. Laffer. I know exactly what you mean. According to ancient island custom, any land owned by either or both spouses upon dissolution of the marriage becomes exclusive property to the male member of the household. Congratulations, Mr. Laffer. You now are now the owner of a considerable chunk of non tonight real estate. I'll make the necessary arrangements and have Roger get that for you. So we say, cool, stand, and let's go look. She's pretty cute, too. She's got some nice blue eyes. All right, so cool. Oops, that's not the door. That was embarrassing, Larry. So if you ask him immediately upon leaving, he'll say, yep, I'm working on it, but he will not have it ready. So all you have to do is literally walk out and walk right back in. And boom, you see the points? Absolutely, here it is. It's isolated away from the main tourist area, which, you know, it's a tourist island. Eventually, it's all going to be tourist island. So if we look at the deed, there it is. Scrap the Bear of the Tribes. 640 acres. That is a massive amount of land that we now have and we're going to give to Cherry Tart uh, in order to do what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and save. And let's take a stroll. Let's go talk to Miss Cherry Tart who is at the resort. If I can find my way down. And it's not the resort. Make our way up. Look in mirror, you see yourself looking back. I think I do that almost every time I pass that mirror. It's some kind of vanity thing, I suppose. So now it should be safe to knock on the door because that's what she said to do. Ah, see, Larry, is that you? Yes, it's me, Cherry. You say, hey, I've got it right here, and I think I, you know how much I'd like to give it to you. 
I think he means more than that. Oh, Larry, 640 acres of virgin non tonight rainforest. Heh <laughs> you chuckle. And she says, you're so wonderful. And she talks about removing her costume because now she doesn't have to dance anymore. And she takes it all off. She says, hurry up before the second show starts. And you quickly jump out of clothes and she gets on top. You know, for a guy who is a loser, Larry has scored more frequently than I ever have in the course of one day here. He's already been with two women. Uh, granted, he's gone through a lot of bad luck, and it's about to get worse because it's dark, and someone, the show is about to start. Um, son of a bitch. Larry, that's you wearing her clothes. <laughs> You're caught, Larry, and red-handed. Oh, in a hurry to get dressed, you grabbed her clothes. And they think it's you. Or they think it's her, I should say. So, uh, if you stand there too long, they'll start to boo and turn on you. So you have to immediately uh, pretty much type dance. Or something related to dancing. And, as you see, they'll throw money uh, while Larry's dancing. And you get $501 bills. You seem to have been a big hit. Just imagine I could have got way more. More than being a programmer at Sierra. That's a nice little punch from Al. Now you'd think you'd go in and basically go get uh, dressed back into your leisure suit. But this is an Al Lowe game. We're going to do something a little different. Um, I highly recommend when you are in an unusual outfit to walk around some. Um, I'll do it later also when we go to Fat City. So what we're going to do is... I'm going to take our cute little self and see how far we can go. Namely, we're going to go back to the lawyer, Do We Cheat Him and How? And what's going to be what's going to happen is a interesting twist, if you will. It is, after all, a leash suit Larry game, so expect the unexpected. And again, walking up this little ridge, hidden as it is, is very difficult. So. We're going to ask about the divorce papers. He clearly doesn't want to talk yet. It says he's busy, so we're going to pace. So apparently he does not want to talk about the divorce. So he doesn't look very busy right now. So we'll give him money since the first thing was free and so we have to pay for the divorce which we get with the $500 we earned oh by the way a nice outfit yeah 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 I'm back Miss Cheatham and she, her eyes widen as she spies it oh you like to play dress up too what do you mean too so things are about to happen Yes, yes, sit down, Mr. Laffer. Make yourself comfortable. So she's going to go ahead and close the door to make sure everything remains confidential, if you will. And Larry says, do you mind if I take off this hat? Carefully remove the gigantic feathered hat from your head and place it at your feet. And now she takes off her clothes and... Uh, She's wearing men's undergarments, except for the top, obviously, because she's very well in doubt. And as you can see, the feather on the tail rises, and this is lady number three that Larry gets. 
and this phone comes down about six times. So I'm going to double speed this through. I mean, how much can she be into it if she keeps taking phone calls and jotting down notes while Larry is trying to give it to her? He says, if you're that busy, I'll just come back. She says, sure, I'll have your divorce papers ready. So wiggling your way out of your grass, you grab the feathered hat and put it back on. So we already know we have to basically leave, come back, and then it should be ready. And I'm glad you asked, Miss Laffer. They're all set. Here you are. So we're going to take a look at those divorce papers. Oh, look. Somehow her um, Bet City membership got stuffed in there with the divorce papers. So now we know we can go to Fat City. We are making progress. But the first thing we have to do is go back and change into our regular leech suit. Actually, you know what? I don't think I feel like I want to, after this playthrough, restore the game and see if you, because we have the card. And by having the card, we can actually know the locker number and the combination. So I'm wondering if we can technically get into Fat City using this outfit or what would happen. I don't think I've tried that. So we're going to go ahead and open the door. And go ahead and go over here where the suit is, get suit and change back. So now we have a Fat City membership, so we know that that's probably going to be our next stop. direction Fat City is in, so I'm wandering around aimlessly. I know it is like all the way to the left on one of these screens. There we go. It's funny, he says, are you new in town? If you say yes, he it just says okay. And if you say no, it just says okay. So we're going to go over here and say look. And we're going to look door. It says locker room. All right. So we're going to use the card. And it opens the door. So now I'm going to sort of speed part this because I don't remember. I couldn't remember where the lock was. I also couldn't remember where to get the combination. I knew we had it somewhere, so I was literally just trying different stuff. And I figured out, look at this back of the spot card. It's um, lock number 69, and it gives you the location of a few areas on the back of the card. This changes every time. Once again, this is part of the copy protection. What it is is the combo is related to the location that's mentioned in the order. So for example, if like bar 01 was on page three and it said bar 01 on the back of the card, it would, the first number on the lock would be three. So we know that now. Now I just can't remember which lock was hers. So I ended up, now we know the Fat City, Hertz Run a Bike. Now we know the combo, but I don't remember. I remember it was like a corner, but I can remember which one. 
So I, as you can see, double sped, speed through this and tried to find which locker it was, and it turns out to be this one. So now we get points. We've found her locker, and we know the combo. So now we're going to open, look in locker. There's a photo of a scantily clad Tom Selleck. Oh, some deodorant, and some women's sweats. So in order to work out, we're going to need to put on those sweats. So Larry quickly ducks down, stands back up, and we got sweats. Now what I'm wondering is, because that card opens up and Larry changed in this locker room, is this like the women's locker room? Or is it universal? Alright. So I will say this. This will speed through real quick. Because what happened is... Uh, there's a part that comes up where with Bambi, and in order to actually talk to her and work with her, you have to, <laughs> it looks really funny sped up, you have to actually um, have worked out, be buff, and take a shower. And you'll see when I do this that I do 25, 25, 25, and there's a zero at the end. Uh, because I totally forgot, and I did not get the message that I had changed size. You can see from the side, I'm still actually kind of big or actually look like what I look like in real life uh, so we're gonna go take a shower and this is where I dead end which is why I'm speeding this up because you use this opener rope and it disappears so since I did not do the full workout I am actually not able to finish what I need to do with Bambi so this part's gonna be sped up kind of quick and we're just gonna let this go go over here look at that you see Bambi's flying through. Again, this is because it's all sped up. Don't worry about this. I'll slow it down when I come back to her because she says I would never do anything with you. So I thought I could come over here, open lock her, do it again, and go work out, whatever. Or no, first it's deodorant. That's what I missed. So I'd worked out and didn't use deodorant. So I haven't realized yet that I've messed up. So you talk to her. She wants to do a exercise video but it's, a, but it's a competitive market and she doesn't know what to do so when you say help and she's like yeah no not you and that's when I realized that you know what I haven't worked out all the way I forgot to do something so we get this I'm gonna go work out I couldn't remember where the last workout thing which is probably why I missed it but it's at the base and there we go so we're going to do 25 of those. Unfortunately, what that does is that does make you sweaty, and she won't work out with you if you're sweaty. And what we don't have anymore after we've taken a shower is the soap. So if you go here, open locker, da-da-da-da. Try to rush back to her. If you talk to her she says you stink so i've had to restore to you before we did the workout we're gonna have to do the workout again so we're gonna put on the sweats and this is where i put it back to just the normal double speed You essentially have to do each one of these workouts and get 25 reps each. And this is the one that I missed originally. Since we already saw this, I may just speed up this part uh, for the playthrough.
there's not much to talk about on this part because you're basically just watching him do weights. Although this one is probably the best one because you see his actual face over to the left, like actually struggling. This is pretty funny. Um, he just randomly starts bulking up. And the music that it actually plays with this sounds a lot like the Rocky theme. And there's the pulsating pectorials that uh, Patty is after. And naturally we know Larry's not going to keep that perfectly over <laughs> pumped up body but he's definitely far more fit and no longer has that gut so what we're gonna do is go back over here open the locker do the combo and get undressed or remove clothes apparently says now you've gone and made this super x-rated we're going to close the locker and we naked when he walks forward you can see a wee wee so we're going to go in here bottom view of the wee wee and we're going to turn on the shower we use the soap and soon it's all gone I'm going to turn off the shower. Open the locker, do the combo. Use a towel to dry off. Use deodorant. This is where I said sometimes you want to experiment with what Larry can and can't do. It's always good to save beforehand in the event something goes drastically wrong for trying to do something stupid, like walking out of a locker naked. Now thankfully this does not end the game, it merely tells you that while you enjoy gallivating in the nude, there is a policy for not doing that. So I'll restore back to the locker, so I don't have to walk back, change clothes, now we're in our leisure suit. We're going to close the locker. Now we're going to go talk to Bambi, because now we've got all of the workout, we're muscular, we've dried off, we used deodorant, Bambi should be ready to accept us for who we are now so let's go do that you're gonna use the card that opens the door when she says a hunk like you would be hard to forget so you ask about the video, it's not well, today's marketplace, I'm having trouble coming up with an idea. And so you offer to help. And basically you say, sex. Of course, why didn't I think of that, she says. Since we'll be the first one to use uh, sex positions as a part of an exercise, and I'm pretty sure that that's not true. So we see her doing whatever that is. I mean, at least the splits or something. Larry tells her, so now she's jiggling her butt, so at least that's something. The microphone gets an erection, and then she does the cowboy throttle, and then shaking the booty on all fours. Camera breaks in the background, and now she's super turned on. So she uses a card to go in here. since there's apparently no other bed in this place to make out at, we're just going to use a sun tanning bed, which seems totally safe. Uh, but, you know, whatever. This is, what, girl number 
One, two, three, four, until that happens. But in one day, Larry's been with four women. I mean, Al Lowe can poke fun at this dude in all his situations, but he's been with four women in one day. <laughs> that is, uh, that's not an easy task. Not even if you paid for it. Not that I've paid for it to be with four women. Uh, I'm just saying, if, 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 if someone did, it would still be difficult. Or, shall we say, hard. Alright, so we're done with Fat City. We're, uh, we're gonna move on from here. Okay, so from Fat City, we know we have divorce papers now. So, what we're gonna go do is see if Patty is playing. Because now that we're all buffed out and everything, Patty, I believe, should be now ready at the resort. Again, so far there's been very little that has tried to kill Larry. Like, it's virtually impossible so far that I've found by playing of uh, something that tries to kill Larry, or that can bring Larry's demise, other than knocking on the door um, where Cherry's at before she's ready. Again, sorry for my vanity, I had to look in the mirror. And there we are. So we have a Elvis impersonator out there. We're going to sit, but not next to him. We're actually going to sit and look at Patty. Hi, my name's Larry. Oh, hello to you, Larry. And she is pretty, too. Although I think Cherry is prettier than Patty. Uh, if we're going to judge these graphics. But who? I mean, beauty is all in the eye of the beholder. Or whatever they say. But basically, you talk to Patty and she's like, hey, you know what? I want to do something. But it's very difficult to pry, <laughs> to pry information out of Patty. Where she says, you won't experience that until you've had me, whatever. But she does talk about, um, she can be with someone who is uh, married. And then you say, Patty, look, I did it. My divorce is final. Which is funny because you just talked to her and it's like, look, I did it. So congratulations, Larry. So we're going to go ahead and leave. She needs something. In order to get laid, she needs to get laid. So just in case I fall off the edge, we're going to save. So we're going to get the orchids and kind of do what we did with the, with the grass. We're going to basically weave it into a lay. Once again, Larry Shoina, he's got some skill.
So we're gonna look again and we're gonna look at Patty and we're gonna give her a lay. She says, thank you, you're such a charmer, I'm ready. What do you wanna do? Well, it's pretty easy, I think, what we wanna do. And apparently saying go with Patty is not the right word because I think it's just reading the word go. And then when you say go to your room, she says, oh, what the hell, let's do this. Here, Larry, take my key to the suite. I'll slip back and use a service elevator. Oh, remember, Larry, I refuse to make love to men without something to drink. So now we need to find somewhere to find a bottle. So we can't take that cup. So we have no money. So now we have to acquire a drink without any money, which will be difficult. Or will it? It's a leech suit Larry game. There's always a way. So let's see if we can order a drink and just get it delivered. Show key to man. May I rent a room here? Say hey, you're the laugher guy. Uh, <laughs> pretty much says you have no money. You can't hit him. You can't insult him. Try to order wine for the penthouse. He says no. So we know it's not there. Can't go that way. So, where would we get a drink for free? So it's probably not going to be at the lawyer place. Chippendales is closed. So what about the comedy club? Lo and behold, what is that on the table? Alright, so we just get the bottle of fine wine. And we're just going to walk off with it. No one killed us, no nothing. We just get it and we go. So now we have to go back to the resort, go to the top penthouse, and let's do that thing with Patty. What we want to do is go to the right screen because Patty's not up there anymore. Press the button. We're going to ride that elevator. And hopefully that's not the only thing we ride. If you know what I mean. Alright, so penthouse. Boop. Both you and the elevator get a rise. So we pour the wine. Now you can press F8 to bypass this scene if you're so inclined. But why would you? This, you would think, is the, no pun intended, climax of the game. It's actually not. But we want to see Larry succeed here. This is what it's all about. Larry's about to make it. With Passionate Patty, and the game is called Passionate Patty in Pursuit of the Pulsating Pictorials. So this has got to be the end, right? It's not. 
So, how'd you get started in music? Shut up, Larry. And then they kiss. Oh, Patty. Oh, Larry. Oh, Patty. Oh, Larry. Oh, Patty. Oh, Larry. Wherever did you learn to kiss like that? Well, when I was younger, I did play trumpet. <laughs> so, and here we go with girl number five. So, there's some love making. Again, I don't know why the filth level five matters because it's all blacked out. So, I mean, but it's it's Patty. It's supposed to be the one that he loves. So, I get it. Let's let's give him some privacy. But on all the other ones, the filth level five really didn't matter. Again, I think it's literally only for the binoculars. But here we are with Larry and Patty making sweet love with the little uh, thermometer thing getting hotter and hotter. And Larry mentions both women. He's actually been technically with three. Unless he's only counting Eve and Koala, or however you pronounce her name. And as Patty drifts to sleep, she dreams about how to... Oh, first, let's just go here. She, He thinks man of the dreams, woman of the dreams. I'm in love. There will never be another woman for me. She thinks, how oh, I wish I still smoked. The two of you drift to sleep, bathe in the glow of your experience. And that settles it for now. Larry Laffer, forever tomorrow, I must call my boyfriend and tell him I can't be with him. And she needs to break up with Arnold. And that's what Larry wakes up to. Wait, what? What'd she say, Arnold? I thought she felt something. I knew I felt it. During the best sexual experience of my life, she was thinking of another man? Larry is devastated. And he basically thinks, I'll always be a loser. It doesn't matter. I give up. I've had it with women. That's just not worth it. I'm just going to leave. And so Larry puts on his suit and departs, leaving passionate Patty slumbering in the blankets. She hears the door shut and checks for him, and he's not there. He's gone. What happened? Oh no, I finally met the man of my dreams and now he vanishes. Now what will I do? What indeed? Where is he? So she gets up, looks through the little binocular thing. And where could he be at this time of night? Keep your eye in the kind of upper center, upper right, sort of. And boop, there it is, that little flash. And was that a flash of white polyester so she takes a look and we see Larry and he's heading into the bamboo forest so Patty knows what she must do she's on a quest to find Larry Larry Laffer So now, at this point, we take over the game as Patty. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And let me tell you, as Patty, this game tries to kill you frequently. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do... You can see her dress right there. Oh, you can't wear the dress from there. You have to do it from behind. So wear a dress. She'll grab it and throw it on. Wear the pantyhose that are sitting on the table. And we're going to look at the table. So... So there's panties, so we're going to wear panties. She says, okay, you've always enjoyed the feel of black lace. There's a brassiere there, so we're going to get the bra and 
Why would you put the bra on top of the dress? So you have to take off the dress, wear the bra, and then put the dress back on. And we get the bottle. <laughs> it says, you want to play the piano, but really, let's just go find Larry. All right, can we get the tray? No, you don't need it. All right, but I want it. Press the button. And now we're going down. Not the first time she's done that. So as Patty, what we're going to want to do is explore some of the same areas that Larry has explored to make sure there isn't something different. So let's look in the mirror. Oh, you see yourself looking back at you. So immediately there's in the lower left that colorful pen that's shiny, like rotating colors. So you, you're going to want to get that and it's a magic marker and who doesn't need a little magic in their life. And we're going to get the cup and it says, yep, what we're going to do is take the money. To play the piano it says no you've played this piano enough for one lifetime So now with Patty, we're going to do a little bit of exploring, make sure we don't really miss anything. All right, so we have a bottle and that's not the right place to get water. And remember, Larry got water over here, so fill bottle and sure enough and that water is critical in order to survive the bamboo forest and you're probably going to want to drink the water yourself before we uh, head into the bamboo forest to get as much water in us as we can i actually don't know if you do need to drink water before you go in i've always done it So as you can see, I'm struggling to get up to the lawyer's place. All right, since no one is here now, there's a good chance we don't need anything. We can't get behind the desk to see if Roger might have something cool. And all these doors appear to be locked. Nothing in the fax machine either, so let's go ahead and leave this area. Alright, now Chippendales appears to be open. So we're going to go ahead and talk to him, and... He'll say, yep, it's a low rate of $25, comes out to $42 or something like that. Count your money, you have 500, so you pay the man. And boy, what luck, I just happen to have $43. Even though it says we have 500, I believe that's a glitch because it's Larry who actually has $500 from when he does the dance. 
now it says coincidentally we had $43. If you count your money now, it says you're busted because we just gave up the 43 bucks we had. We did not have 500, so I believe that's a bug. So we're gonna sit and uh, the Chippendales is proud to present in person tonight only for one night only, the first, the original, the greatest, the owner, Dale. So out comes Dale. Breaking it down, Dale. Woo. So what's funny, it says the men look terminally bored, but it looks like it's all men in here. And uh, Patty appears to be the only female. So he throws his clothes and well, why not? We're gonna throw the panties. <laughs> and she shrieks, take me big boy. Which is weird cause she's looking for Larry and she's telling a stripper to uh, take her. So we're gonna see Dale randomly back up and <laughs> magically pick up her underwear. And if we wait a moment, Dale will eventually come out. Patty, look, it's him. It's Dale, and he's coming right for you. Right for that empty seat. You look lonely. Would you like a little company? Dale says in his black underwear. Hello, handsome. My name is Patty. Thanks, Patty. And so there's Dale. I'm pretty sure this is a reference to someone at Sierra, because it's way too detailed to not be a reference. And Dale pretty much tells you, uh, before you go into that uh, forest, I would read your manual. So that is basically giving you the clue you need to get through the bamboo forest. If you look and you have the manual, you'll notice that there's a song that goes throughout the whole book. The first letter that is capitalized is usually a W, E, N, or an S, which is actually west, east, north, south directions. And that is the directions you have to take in order to survive the bamboo forest. Because you only have so much water and you'll dehydrate and die if you get lost in there. And if you ask about the manual, he says, wasn't it in the box? And you say, okay, fine, whatever. Thanks, Dale. And he says, hope you find your man. So we're gonna go ahead and go. What a show, and how about that Dale? And the comedy club is now closed. So we're gonna go up here. So apparently you just, there we go. The entrance is to the left. Now, again, you're gonna wanna use the instruction manual to bypass this forest or write down the direction I go in. But in one of the times, I actually think I'm going the wrong direction and I end up restoring and I actually think I got lost and somehow still managed to get out because by looking at the directions I should have been taking, I think I missed a direction somewhere, like I went north one too many times, but somehow had enough water in my body to somehow recover and go the right direction back down and find the exit. And she'll give you references here where she says, boy, I could use a good belt right about now, meaning she's losing water weight, but you're gonna wanna do it only when she's basically kneeled down and you're going to want to basically save uh, in different slots uh, to see how far you can go before she does actually die and then use the water before that screen. So now you can see she's already starting to slouch. So she doesn't have that many more screens that she can go before um, she starts to die. Okay. 
So I believe the cocktail is the last reference that she'll survive. I think if she goes one more screen beyond that, she will actually perish. So you can see uh, if you do get lost, there's not a lot of wiggle room to find the right way. And again, I think at some point, I think I went one too many screens and I got, I actually got lost and somehow found the recovery because this is why I'm hitting south because from what I'm looking at, I believe I'm supposed to go south now, but maybe this is the south. So I can't tell if I've gone too many screens over, not a screen, not enough screens. See, and now this looks like a dead end. So I've clearly done something wrong somewhere when following the directions. So this could go poorly. Back to slouching over now. I'm just going to go ahead and restore to where I was and see if I can find the right way. Alright, once again, I'm not feeling confident because I think I've made a wrong turn somewhere. save here because I think I'm on the right path but I'm not sure anymore now we're crawling so we're gonna go ahead and use that water And we're at another dead end, but there is way north, which I don't think is the way I'm supposed to go. Already lost again. So at this point, I'm just following this path and hoping for the best, which worked out for me. As you stumble out of the bamboo forest, you hear a beautiful stream. And what we're going to do is we're going to save and pretty much say, I have no idea how I did that. <laughs> so this is one of the places where Patty can die. Because clearly you're going to want water. And it says it's like swifting, so you drink water, you're not close enough. Whoop! And there goes Patty. See ya uh, over the edge. Isn't it difficult to swim upstream, especially when you can't? So you basically have to slowly edge and drink water.
All right, so now we're gonna press on. Now it looks like we could climb that little branch thing, right? But you can't. <laughs> you might wanna try climbing down the cliff or will you fall for that old one again? Nothing special about those flowers, they're just there for design. So the rock has a cylinder shape. So we're going to take off our pantyhose. We're going to tie it to the rock. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to basically shimmy bungee down over the edge of the cliff. Things seem to be going well until it doesn't. And down goes Patty. So you bring yourself to stand, and if you notice uh, the impression left in the dirt from Patty's uh, assets. Go ahead and take a look at the ground. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty much from here on. Everything is trying to kill Patty. Everything. So every girl needs a little magic in their life. It's going to be one of the most oddest things to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to climb this tree, wrap your legs around the cylinder, not a, not a sensation you're not used to, and we're going to get coconuts. It's not the first time you've held a pair of nuts in your hand. All right, so we're going to climb back down. Oh, so when you look grass and go over here, when I was younger, I did not recognize what that symbol was <laughs> uh, for the grass. Uh, but pretty much when I was older, I understood the reference to the grass being marijuana. So when I first played it as a kid, I just thought it was grass and weeds. I did not realize it was weed weed until I actually grabbed it and was like, now oh, I get it. The shadows are actually symbols of marijuana. So you basically take it and weave it into a rope because you get a clue that says another use for um, marijuana was hemp, which was often used as a rope. So now we have a rope. All right, so now we start to get off this little chunk of land. All right, so. There's a couple things I was, when I was playing this during the long playthrough, Again, because I'm not looking at any form of walkthrough or anything like that. So I was going to try to basically <laughs> put tie the bra to the coconut tree and sling myself across, but that obviously didn't work. So there was a few different ideas that um, I tried. Some of them led to impending doom. Um, but yeah. Alright, so 
tie rope to palm tree. Good idea, but no. So it does not appear there's any way off this little ledge by looking around real quick. So if we have a rope, let's throw it over to the rock. All right, so now we've got it on the rock. We're gonna tie the other side to the palm tree. So here we go. All we have to do is climb across this rope. Doesn't look like that far of a ledge, right? Uh, it doesn't seem that far at all. So, as I said in the save game, can't remember if this is right. So let's climb across it. And we squeeze our legs tightly as we cross. And suddenly the rope, or suddenly the distance, looks much farther than it does from the original view. Your hands rapidly tire, which is not a good sign. We're not even halfway through. And you are having trouble keeping your hands there. And this vulture is like, nope, nope we're not going to make it. Although that is a great view of Patty, I must say. So let's go ahead and restore. So we need some kind of thing. Use the bra to cross the rope. Ah, nope, it's not even using the bra. She's just crossing the rope. So let's tear off a part of the dress. Hey, good idea. You discreetly move a little piece. And now we can use it like a harness. Before climbing the rope, you slip it and use it as part of a harness to go across. And you feel certain that this informal harness is going to work out for you. Well, we've already gotten farther than we did before. We've managed to at least gotten to the part where the bird is. And it says it seems to be working. We're at 3,100 points out of 4,000 and how quickly points are scored in this game. 900 points is not actually that far away. And hey, Patty, we did it. Cool. So now we have crossed and whoop, the rope broke. So if there's anything we need, there's no going back. Try to get the rope, but it says, nah. Now what's funny is it says you can't get the rope because it's hanging over the edge, but the tied part is literally at the back of the rock where she is standing. But regardless, we'll just move on. Now this next part, I'm going to double speed a little bit because of how frequently I die because of that native pig. I can't even tell you how many times I died because of this thing. And I even had the right idea of like slinging the bra, but it would tell me no. I try throwing it, throw a bra, no, no, and it just kept killing me over and over and over. So what I started doing is basically hitting F3 as quickly as I could and just kept hitting throw bra. Good idea, good idea, good idea. And it's randomly as he's going back, it does it and it knocks him into the river. And it says, you did it, Patty. But did you notice you keep losing more and more clothing? So that seems kind of, I don't know what, I don't know where the right place is to throw that. And so I put, okay, that was stupid because I'm not sure where the proper place was to actually knock that pig away it seemed very random and took way too many attempts to make it right and now we can see the log and remember last time when we played larry 2 uh when he went into the water uh he was essentially eaten, eaten by a piranha so it feels like going into the water is a bad idea but if you try to do it from here and try to get on the log says you're not close enough so you have to get in the water you mount that gnarly log, Patty. You mount it good. All right. And so I expect it to drift away, but it tells you, Patty, it's actually still stuck in the mud. So if you try to move it, it doesn't move. You have to stand, move the log, pull it out of the mud, and then sit on the log again. And this begins an intense arcade session 
of uh, called log jamming, as I call it, uh, where Patty sits on a log and tries to dodge rocks, boulders, other rafters, and even babies. So this is double sped because at one point I was saving as I was passing him and I got fairly far and accidentally saved just as a rock was coming at me when I was in a corner I, I could not get out of it. So I ended up double speeding this uh, when I got stuck and then just double speeding the actual arcade sequence. You can press F8 to bypass it and not even do this log sequence but as a playthrough I actually wanted to complete it and do the whole thing but it took so long i would not want to torture someone for a playthrough and have me try to come up it was tough to talk about and this is where i got stuck in that corner so i end up restarting all the way back and slowed it down and i discovered what you want to do is just as you pass the rock is when you want to save don't save after you've passed it and you can see that i'm making my way up now I do hit a few things, like right there, um, but overall I actually get much further doing it this way. And if you look at the overall diagram of this map, you can see there is definitely a sexual reference to it. I'll let you try to figure it out. But as you can see, I go and almost make it. And we made it. Yeah. But what lies ahead? Well, we're about to find out. We've got a little over 3,300 points out of 4,000. We're pretty close to the end of the game here, folks. All right, you finally make your way through. and Look for a place to park your log, if you will. So what we're going to do, I know we already saved, but I can't remember if something goes wrong here when I was playing. And look out, something does go wrong. But women jump out of the tree so what's going on here well we're about to find out as your log drifts away you are held captive son of a bitch you've been captured by the famous amazonian women lesbian cannibal natives so you remember the girl that's with your uh ex-wife from leash larry 2 now or she divorces you in leash larry 3 now you know what tribe she comes from it's this tribe and you can see there's men slave and hot women whipping dudes uh, as they bring you to the island. Oh, Patty, where will they take you? And where will there be a hairdresser afterwards? Uh, you're jostled awake. Uh, and you fondly recall a blind date where you were uh, handled like this as you slowly regain consciousness of blackness leaves and that uh larry it's you patty it's you oh larry i've missed you oh patty i've missed you kiss smooch smooch talk 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 all right i couldn't believe you left you can't believe how it felt to finally found a perfect match and then have you disappear but tell me larry why did you go he says you you did, Patty. It's all your fault. You mentioned a guy named Arnold. And she says, oh, Larry, you wonderful, fragile fool. I was going to break up with him. Oh, Patty, I'm a fool. Speaking of which, did you come here with a plan to rescue me? Uh, mm, wait a minute. I'm sure I'll think of something. Well, you better think of something fast. I think we're about to be dinner. So if you look, you don't have much left. Uh, as you look at the dress, you can see it's actually gotten smaller. And every woman needs a little magic. Well, the key's not going to do any good on the bamboo, so we're down to the marker. Larry, I don't know if this will work or not, but I have this magic marker. And she draws with it, and ta-da! It's a magic door. So let's find out where that goes. I'm right behind you. So down goes... <laughs> Patty, and then Larry goes, and we see a super fast falling sequence as they try to ponder what is happening to them. As Larry says, I feel like we fell out of the game, and boom, into some police quest. Yeah, quiet on the set, please. Music, lights, camera, action. And we see the guys underneath the set controlling the car. So 
We're on the set of the police. Craig, look out. Boom. And then, boom. Godzilla. Bzzz. And, boop. Wow. Some guys really know how to make an entrance. Alright, so Larry takes a look around. Larry spots <laughs> Patty laying motionless. She meant since if she keeps doing her own stunts like this, she's going to wind up flat. Uh, well, most of her weight is in the top chest, so no wonder that's why she keeps landing in that general direction. So I know we're near the end because we're out of the game and we're on the set of Police Quest and Larry just follows Patty around. So let's see what's next. Studio C. Oh, look, it's like the Sierra props. You can see some Space Quest 2 insurance salesman, the We Shoot Larry 1 taxi, the King's Quest logo, the Space Quest logo over there. Um, kind of looks like the Manhunter robes, the shootout thing for Police Quest, Monolith Burger, and then Space Quest. And they both go floaty float. I do want to say, I mean, I love the music in Leash Suit Larry 3, but this Space Quest theme is pretty amazing. And so, obviously, this little generator thing is causing it. And to me, the plug is back here at this black thing. I thought that was the plug that we need to unplug. But upon looking at it closer, eventually I do notice that underneath the magnet, coming out of that pot thing, there is a plug that goes to the yellow floor. But the whole time I thought it was that back wall thing that looks like a plug. And I kept getting the error message that I was not close enough until I see that. And then I unplug it. And naturally spin around as gravity slowly returns. And boop, Patty is on her butt and Larry's on his butt. So they say, what's next? What is next? Truck that camera left. No, 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 no. Back. Good, good. That's fine. Stop right there. All right, Rosella, do your thing. And that on the chair can be none other than Roberta Williams. And the one climbing the tongue is Rosella, which, ironically, Larry should technically recognize since that's even the same outfit she is wearing in Leisure Suit Larry 2. So Larry should know who she is because he finds Daventry women sexy. Then again, he finds all women sexy. So here we are in the set of King's Quest 4 inside the whale's mouth, uh, where Rosella has to climb up the tongue. And she's complaining that it's too gooey and slippery, and that there's people inside, even though it's supposed to be a closed set. So then Roberta Williams yells, cut, break, and who are you and what are you doing here? How'd you get in here? So Patty and Larry approach uh, Roberta Williams and go explain to her uh, why they're there. She says, hi, I'm Passionate Patty. This gentleman is Larry Laffer. Uh, we just dropped in, literally. Actually, Roberta, it's one hell of an adventure how we got here. We've been through a virtual maze of bamboo. Uh, with one drink of water, rappelled down a sheer cliff with my pantyhose, crossed an incredible chasm, uh, etc., etc. And she says, okay, okay. And Larry says, yeah, uh, I was just captured by women. Uh, if you could just set us up a little place to work, uh, we can write an adventure game for you. And she says, okay, let's go talk about it. And she takes you up to the lake home and says, go ahead, make me a game. And so, we shoot Larry 3 ends. Larry and Patty move in together, sharing a simple programmer shack in the mountains, uh, where Larry learns to program. Let's see how it all goes. Outside, Louise. No, Louise. How about lefties? So, we see Larry is actually uh, programming we shoot Larry 1 with the help of Patty, who basically names the Lost Wages place called Lefties. And he says, let's test it. And we see Larry go inside and the lefties thing, so we know the program works. And the end. Congratulations, you did it, you've won. So we end with 390, or 3,970 out of 4,000. You did a great job, but you did miss something. Could have taken time to improve your tan. 
So I don't know if that's like if Larry does a 10. I actually don't know where those points are for. So anyway, we've reached the end. Um, it's a long uh, talk through this game. I hope you've enjoyed what I've had to share and what I've discussed in this game. There's more videos coming. I plan on doing Leash Suit Larry 5 next. All right, thanks for listening and please subscribe and tell others to subscribe, pass it around, you know, tell your friends, have them tell their friends. All right, let's just, let's just fade out now. Fade out, okay, cool. Wait, wait, only part of the set is fading out. We have to fade out the game too. Can we fade out the game? Guys, let's, let's fade out the game. All right, thanks.